Today we're answering questions from our last portrait shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, that was good. It was good. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us all up on Twitter and on Facebook at Flurn. This is Kat. What's going on? Nothing much. What you doing? Drinking some wine. Sounds pretty good. You can ask me some questions today? <laughs> yes. So we have some questions here um, regarding the corporate shoot. Um, so. So you're just going to ask me them? So, where did these come from? Who asked these They questions? are fans, actually, who had questions about the shoot. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you're going to ask me them, and I'm going to answer them to yes. the best of my ability. Yes, you are. <laughs> I, they might not be great answers. I apologize. All right. So first question. Uh, what is the reason behind shooting at f11 to f14 depending on skin color okay so basically if you guys are going to be uh, doing a lighting setup and you're planning on photographing caucasian people african-american um, filipino you want to use a couple different settings so you can like expose for skin basically uh, darker skin is going to absorb more light and lighter skin is going to reflect more light it's just how, how light works and uh, so if you are going to want to properly expose both for dark skin and for light skin, you can change the settings on your lights. Like you could bring in more power from your lights or you could just allow more light to come into the camera. So when we're photographing someone with lighter skin, we're shooting at F14 because it's allowing less light into the camera, which is gonna properly expose their faces. If, they want, if we're gonna be photographing someone with darker skin, we need more light coming into the camera. That's why we're changing to F11. Perfect. Easy. Easy breezy. <laughs> All right, so next question. Can I get the same results with speed lights and a couple umbrellas? Um, that's tricky. It's, I wouldn't say same. I would say you would probably be able to get something similar. Uh, there are a few reasons for that. First, we used four different lights. Uh, we're using a large soft box and uh, some reflectors and we're using V-flats. So uh, to get that exact same look using just two speed lights and a couple umbrellas, I would just say not really, but you could get something similar. And what I would do is I'd put one speed light right above my subject here uh, in the same place that we have the soft box from before and then w the other speed light on the background. And as far as the fill light is concerned, uh, I would just open up the camera. So instead of shooting at one over one sixtieth of a second, maybe shoot at one over fiftieth or one over twentieth. And with that, you're going to probably get a little bit of motion blur, right. but it's going to allow more ambient light, which is going to serve as a fill light. So if you guys don't have enough lights or you're in a place that's kind of dark and you need a little bit more fill light, you can use a slower shutter speed. Just keep in mind that um, at times you're going to be introducing a little bit of motion blur and things like that. Right. So um, similar, yes, yeah. but would I want to do the same thing? Would I want to attempt the same thing with two speed lights? No, I, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't try to do the same thing. Right. Okay. Well, so pretty much if they're limited with certain equipment, they can try doing that. Yeah, you get similar, or you could just go for a slightly different look um, with the image. I, you could use, still use one of your speed lights for a main light. You could use the other light uh, for fill and just choose a different backdrop that doesn't need, you know, something on it. Maybe like a natural backdrop. Um, that would be my suggestion. So instead of, uh, it's. You know, it's like, hey, I got this apple. Can I make a cherry pie? It's like, no, why don't you just make apple pie instead? Um, that, that'd be my suggestion. Perfect. <laughs> All right, next question. Um, when firing off your camera, did you pre-focus and then set it to manual so it didn't focus? Um, well, what we did is we had everyone sitting on a stool, which pretty much limits them. I mean, they can lean forward and backwards and go left and right a little bit, but it's not like they're moving a ton. And uh, so in that case, we, we didn't set it to manual focus. We just set it to autofocus. So okay. if someone did lean forward or background, it would catch them. And uh, they were, the framing was you know relatively simple. They took up most of the frame and uh, the camera really didn't have a problem focusing on their head right. every single time. So um, in this case, we used autofocus and uh, there was no one behind the camera. But I wouldn't recommend doing that unless someone's like sitting on a stool because then, you know, if they move slightly one way or the other, right. you won't be able to focus on them. So, True. All right. Sounds good. What light stand slash boom setup are mm. you using for the Octavox? We have a really giant boom. It's like a Calumet mini boom. It's a, like a parallelogram. It's got counterweights on it. It's 
just awesome. I really like it. Um, we can probably include a link in this where you can look at it and possibly buy one. They're kind of expensive and I I was a photographer for like four years before I was able to buy one of these. because I mean, they're like 500 bucks or something right. like that for a boom. But uh, we've got that on a giant Avenger uh, stand that is also like a $500 stand. But we got that one on clearance when uh, like a, a company in Chicago was kind of like getting rid of some stuff. So um, for the big stuff like that, like I go with like used stuff if you can, because it's, it's just going to save you a lot of money because it, it gets really expensive really fast. Right. Awesome. But it's good equipment. <laughs> Thank you for that. Did you make the V flats from foam core? And if you did, where did you get the foam core from? Um, we didn't make our own V-flats. Someone gave us the V-flats, but you can get uh, foam core at like uh, art centers, like Blick. a Blick or something like that. Just like a big art store, like a Michaels or things like that. Um, if they don't carry them, I would just go there and ask if they can order. It's four foot by eight foot foam core, one side being white and the other side being black. And then you just use tape and you tape them together. <laughs> it's very, very specific. You have to use tape. What kind of tape? Just tape. Just You can use like scotch tape? The tape that's sticky. Okay. You, you make sure like, you... Like the masking tape? We used gaffer tape. Gaffer tape. Yes. Okay. But tape will, will work. Duct tape, gorilla tape, Where blue painter's tape. Together. Okay. Perfect. Packing tape, band-aids. <laughs> no, don't use band-aids. So can you tell us about the light buildup? We can. I will. <laughs> The light buildup is uh, basically, uh, we did take pictures showing you guys what each light looks like individually. So we started with the main light here and then we pumped the background light on and then we pumped the fill light on. So uh, we took pictures of this so you guys could actually see what each of the light does individually and uh, kind of learn how these work and then you can apply them to your own shoes. So that was the end of our questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome so much. Good job. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you guys do have other questions about any of our photo shoots, things like that, uh, just leave them in a comment down below. You can send us an email or on Facebook, things like that. And if we get a lot of questions, especially about a particular photo shoot or episode, we'll just make one of these and you guys can uh, answer the questions. We'll do a video just like this. So let us know what you thought about these questions in this format. And um, we got a little treat for you. We'll flirt you later. <laughs> How do you do? Cut, I don't know. Cut, cut it, it out. out. Ah. Where's that from? Full house. I'm talking to you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make the V? F the V fox. The V. F Excuse me. All right. Next question. We make all of our V here in house. We've got an assembly line system going on. It's really great, actually. <laughs> it's efficient. We can pump out three V an hour. Um, <laughs> we only have the highest quality V <laughs> on the market. Okay. Do you think we're gonna have any bloopers for this? Nah. Nah. <laughs> Hi guys, Kat from Flurn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flurn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter, because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.